If you're looking for ways to get data, this is a video for you. In here, we are going to talk about how can you scrape data from websites like screener.in using Python and capture everything that these websites has to display and then use the data further on in your either analysis or do, you know, put in a bunch of automations, join it with more technical data and whatnot. So this is educational. The scraping of data can be regulated or illegal in a lot of cases. So if you are scraping some website or if you're pulling information from some website, make sure you read the terms and conditions. All right, let's dive in. The conversation is very simple. We'll, we'll first look at the website structure and uh, then we'll, I'll talk about the libraries and then I'll talk about, you know, the actual code that we can use to scrape the data. So this is screener.in, uh, you go to a website and you, uh, you go to the website and you just select a company or pick any company for that matter, Tata Consultancy Services. We'll just take that, no, no, no reason for picking it, just random. And let me hop on to the code and just pull up some libraries for you. So the first library is called requests library in Python. And this library is responsible for making HTTP communication, which is basically, you know, taking care of online internet communication over the internet communication. So if you are calling some endpoint, you will be using this library. Second is a pretty, pretty popular library if you're scraping, it's called beautiful soup. And it's literally used to scrape off information from web page. So basically how a web page looks, something like this. There's a body, there's a header. If you don't know HTML, you'll have to probably study it out. But HTML is very simple. There's a you know title for the page. Then there's header, which is H1, heading 2, which is H2, table, rows, columns, etc. So you can find all of this very well documented. So this is not an HTML class, so I will not get into it. All right, so this library essentially helps you work with HTML. And third is our most likely best friend, Pandas. Um, assuming everybody knows Pandas, if you do not, please check out my previous videos. Pandas is the library to work with if you're doing data analysis and manipulation, basically data frame, may, rows and columns. May. If you want to represent some data, Pandas is your best friend, all right? Now at this stage, I'll want to point out that all code will be shared in member community. So if you're not part of it, please join that. Feel free to continue further and I'll do a quick walkthrough of the code as well. So let me just zoom in. So what I have done is just installed all the three libraries, pip install, request, beautiful soup, pandas, etc. And then I have the imports for them. Then you go on and define the URL. You can, it can be any URL. In this case, as I said, we are taking TCS. So we'll take a bunch of parameters within TCS. You hit the website, you make a request and basically this URL is what is it. So if I run this code, uh, which I've already run, so I'll show you what response has. So it will show you 200, which is a success and what information it has. Uh, let's see inside it. It will most likely just have a bunch of, uh, but I don't think that this will, yeah, it's not callable, but let's see if there are response.json. All right. So it's also not giving me the entire JSON object, but that's okay. We'll be able to see it further. So I've defined a simple scraper function. Now this scraper function, what it's trying to do is check into the status code. If it's 200, it will call beautiful soup and it will start to parse the headings within the website. So if I want to go and, uh, you know, understand what is captured uh, within this. We'll take a look at it at the end, but basically we'll be able to see the entire HTML for here. So for now we are going to capture these many parameters, company name, market cap, high, low, etc., etc., And all of these are present here. You can tailor them and customize it depending on what your formatting is on all of that. And then finally a bunch of error handling code. Then the second is you are tagging h1 to be the company name which is to say that this is element is the heading one so you can open the debug console which is like f11 or f12 in the keyboard depending on the browser and all and this will give you the entire structure of the html so for example i can even pick an element and inspect it so this is if you see it says h1 dot h2 dot shrink test text and this is where the name tata consultancy services come Right. So it, you can hover over it and understand what's the, you know, uh, tag that the right tag that that value is mapped to in HTML. For example, current price is within a table, market cap is a line item, etc, etc. And then there's something called a stop ratios 
all of this information you can you'll have to study the html so depending on the website that you have you'll have to study and understand the key elements that you are trying to pick up and then you'll have to code your way accordingly all right so in here the parameters that have been selected are the standards one which are sitting there and this html.parser does a great job of figuring things out on its own the company name again h1 is the company name i'm making an assumption because i have seen that it is the company name and then you are extracting the values inside it so i'm just going to keep running the code and this is a little bit of formatting we can safely ignore it the formatting basically gives you a nice output to look at if you save that output as a css you'll be able to see and i'll show an example so we have you know something from tcs and you'll see all the response in the form of a nice html which you can later read but if you want to just see this i will open a finder and just close it yeah so this is what you get uh, from the table it's just a, a coloring and all of that happening within the code so that formatting is not essential and it's actually very very optional depending on what you're trying to do so what i've done is i've removed the css information which is the style information which is the color part of it and put the data in the table here as a format so now a bunch of things to notice it has given me those parameters and however if you go and validate right you will see some errors for example market cap is good 1451454815 but there are certain numbers which are not correct like book value it's picking 199 but book value is 250 now i don't know where the value 199 is coming maybe it's picking it from here or most likely here i don't know what book value it's picking and why it is picking 199 so we'll have to do a little bit of debug exercise on it to be able to figure things out so yeah the table is there and this is right now saved in the form of a markdown and then the rest of the values are pretty fine uh, the dividend yield is okay roc is okay like the roc is 64 roc is 74.8 no idea why roe is 60 roe i don't see here roe Maybe ROE is presented somewhere else. I'll just search for 60.4. 60.4. Okay, I don't see that value. So it's obviously doing some errors. However, these errors are not significantly important because the intent of this exercise is not to actually scrape the data from Skinner, but to explain the process. So two things to understand that the key here is understanding the structure of the website or the web page. So if you are able to pinpoint that this is what I want, then you can code around it, which is what I have tried to do in this example. If you see that H1 is hard coded, like I have specifically called that heading one is the company name. In other places, I have not been able to specify what parameters correspond to what values, which is most likely the reason it's screwing it up. So the HTML parser is not working great and uh, that can be fixed by looking at the you know, value that is coming within this library and all of that. So yeah, that's essentially it. That's the whole intent of the conversation to explain and show methods of how can you scrape the data you from something like screener.com using Python. All right. So if you've liked this video, please give a thumbs up, put in comment if you're interested in doing something or if you have a question around scraping data or retrieving data, trying to do a bunch of series across data and see if there's interest. Join the membership channel if you want access to all the code. If you are interested in a course, which is deep dive into Python for financial engineering, put in the link. There's a link in the description. Just click and fill your interest. There's no money right now. We are just planning it out. And please do join the WhatsApp community. It's completely free. Until next video, bye-bye.